All right, guys, so I am working on another project. Um, sorry the videos haven't been coming out as quickly, but I've got a lot of stuff going on, and when I get to the plane and I'm able to work on it, I will try to film it and get you guys some video updates. So what I got going on right now is while the shock wheel system is on the airplane, I've got the shock monster landing gear here in my garage, and I've decided after the success of using the fairings on the wing struts, that I'm gonna go ahead and put fairings on the landing gear, cover them, and paint them up. Um, the other advantage to doing that is it will also help hide that muffler a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan aesthetically, but I'm a huge fan of what it does as far as quieting down the Yamaha engine. So that muffler is here to stay, um, so if I can hide it behind that covered gear leg, that might be uh, a little better looking. So. Um, what I did here is with the TK1 uh, landing gear leg, which is what this is, the front tube is really beefy, much larger than the Kit Fox gear leg, and the aft tube is actually larger as well. So on the Kit Fox gear leg, you can actually use the wing strut fairing plastic extruded stuff as your fairing on the back of the gear leg. Um, you can't do it on this one because the, the diameter of the tube is larger. So I needed to make a fairing for that. And I thought about just you know laying it up foam on there and glassing it right on the gear leg. But I figured it'd be easier to just go out and find some um, tubing that's the same diameter, make a lay up of foam on there um, and make a mold. Then I'll lay up carbon fiber on this, pull the carbon fiber, attach it to the gear leg, cover it with fabric, and then I'll have my airfoil shaped or streamlined fared shape uh, landing gear legs. Um, so learned a lot from the failure of the um, air box that I made. So um, I did use the, the pink foam again on this one. I used expanded foam on the other one, but pink foam on this, but this time when I was done shaping it, I covered it with epoxy resin that hardens up the foam. Then you can go over it with the Bondo, sand it, several different layers. And keeping in mind that this is an outside layup like the cowling was, it didn't have to be a fine gloss finish and perfect body uh, work on it because the, the carbon fiber was going on the outside of it. So this is the front gear leg. So this is what will face the airflow. And then I did the same thing for the rear uh, tube. I went out and found a tube that's a diameter of that and then created an airfoil shape that's very similar to um, the wing strut fairing. You see the airfoil shape. And this one actually, um, just created a cardboard cardboard dam and then poured the expanding foam in there, let it foam up, and then I cut it to shape, sanded it, covered it with epoxy resin, and then came in with a Bondo and uh, cleaned it up. You can see some, some plastic on here, and that's actually the release agent um, because I have already pulled um, some uh, carbon fiber fairings off of these for the first set. I decided to not film it, make sure it worked out, and so I'll cut to uh, the video here of what they look like. So I just pulled these off the mold, and so they're not attached or anything. It's still the raw, raw form. I'm gonna cut the bottom off it so that it's at the right angle. I'm gonna cut in these cross tubes so that it can clamp all the way down. So it's still loose on there. Same thing with the front one. It's pretty tight actually because it's sticking around the bar right here. Um, but that's basically what I'm going for with this. And then I'm not even gonna worry about painting these clear or anything. I'm just gonna sand them smooth and then I'm gonna cover them with fabric. So unfortunately, you won't even see them. Um, the carbon fiber, yeah, I'm using that just because I have some extra carbon fiber and it will you know, be really lightweight, very strong. So each of these are four layers. Um, that's kind of the other thing I've learned throughout doing the carbon fiber is do a minimum of four layers right from the get-go. Um, that thin two or three layers, you're gonna end up wanting to thicken it up anyways. Even with four in here, it still has some flex. So um, I'm just doing from now on on all my, my layups, I'm gonna do a minimum of four layers. All right, so that's what I'm gonna get back to now is I'm gonna cut up the carbon fiber, uh, lay up another set and get those drying and so I can pull those tomorrow um, at some point and then get them attached to the gear legs, um, cut to fit, glued on, and then I'll start working the, doing the fabric work on there and get them all, uh, all done. So that'll be kind of exciting, get that done, 
get them painted, and then when they're ready to go back on, all that, all that work will be done. Also, we're going to try to do some fairings on the shock itself, and then the actual Cobain V. Um, I'm going to save the fairing portion for that. I'm going to incorporate into the belly pod, which is something I hope to get to eventually. So, um, so that's what's going on right now with the Project Kit Fox. We're doing the uh, Shock Monster landing gear leg fairings and covering. And I hope to attain 100 miles an hour uh, cruise speed when I put this gear back on. So with the fairings on the wing struts and uh, the Grove gear that we have on there with the shock wheel, I'm somewhere in the 108 mile per hour range. So if I pull that off and these are fared and I put them back on and I only lose about eight miles per hour, I can maintain that 100. And really, that's my always my target is to see three numbers up there, not two. I want to see 100 miles per hour um, at, at a reasonable cruise setting. So that's the goal with all this is when it goes back on with this gear, um, which I want to put back on to test the big wing, um, that I hopefully will, will maintain that 100 mile per hour. Um, with this on without any fairings before you guys saw without the fairings on the wing struts it was 96. just with the wing strut fairings i might already be there so this can't hurt you know that's really what it boils down to they're made out of carbon fiber they don't weigh anything hardly i think the whole thing will add a pound you know maybe with a fabric a couple a pound per side pound and a half i don't know um but it'll i think it'll look good it'll it'll add some performance to the plane um, and it also, when I'm in, uh, if I'm doing any sort of slipping, that profile with the gear leg covered, when you throw it out, it's actually more um, surface area for drag. So it might, might help there too. So the benefits there, more drag in a slip, hopefully more streamlined for cruise, and it hides the muffler. Um, so that was enough to, to tackle this project. So I'm gonna get back to it. I'll do a time lapse on this, and then uh, I'll compile some more shots once, once the, uh, the process proceeds and we get it all done, I'll show you the finished product. All right guys, I apologize. I did not film the removal of the layups from the mold. I had some people here doing some work this morning and uh, wasn't able to film. So um, here's the aft one as it was pulled from the, the mold, trimmed up the ends, uh, gave it a quick sand, and now I'm gonna fit it to the landing gear. The front one did the same thing. Um, haven't sanded it yet, but I cut a groove in the bottom down here and a groove so that the crossbar can fit through it and that one's ready to be uh, sanded and then bonded to the landing gear. I'll do the aft one and the same thing on the other gear. So all four fairing pieces came out of the molds really well. Um, they look good. So from here, I'll go ahead and get them uh, fit to the landing gear, bonded, and then I'll give you guys an update. All right, so real quick, I want to give an update on the uh, covering of the landing gear. 
you know, I did these fairings. It's been a little while. He's been sitting in a garage, kind of a back burner project. What I did recently is I put these uh, reinforcement plates that look like this over where the step bracket is going to go through. So um, those are all done. Now I'm going to tape the final edges. The other gear leg is already done and pinked. So once I get the um, tapes on, I'll do a brush coat of the poly brush and get them ready for the paint booth. So we got some more paint booth painting coming up. And then I want to get these back on the airplane for uh, High Sierra. And uh, I'd also try to like to get the new wing on. So uh, I've got two months and I've got a lot of work to do. So I'm going to get after it. So the transformation to the Monster Fox is uh, happening. Uh, the shock wheel gear is coming off. In preparation for this wing testing, we're gonna put the shock monster landing gear back on. And so I've got the gear legs all covered and painted to go on. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. So the airplane's jacked up and gearless at the moment. Working on the muffler mount, uh, not putting it back the way I had it before. I'm trying to do a little better connection for the muffler. So I got a plan there. I got to go home and do some welding. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty decent. I'm about ready for High Sierra. All right, just about done putting the Shock Monster landing gear back on. And one of the concerns with this type of landing gear is that if you were to have a failure of the attachment point, either at the bottom or up at the top, then this gear leg would fold up and you would most definitely contact your wing to the ground and it'd be a really bad day. So what a lot of Super Cub owners have done is they've put a steel cable that runs between that top mount and the bottom mount. If there was a failure, then it would just hit that cable and prevent the gear from collapsing. Tony at TK1 Racing has taken it one step further and he has developed Kevlar uh, ropes with eyelets, bolt kit, all they go on there, super lightweight as a safety feature in case you were to have a uh, gear shock failure or attachment point failure. So if you guys are running the Shock Monster landing gear, I would recommend putting a set of these on. I'm definitely doing it just for a peace of mind. Um, called Tony and he shipped them out and they were here the next day. Uh, he is the best with customer service and this is a nice safety feature. So I jacked the uh, plane back up, took the weight off so I could remove the shock bolts and go ahead and put those on. So we am going to get them installed and then I'll show you what they look like. All right, so land out here on the Sacramento River, test, testing out the Shock Monster landing gear with the covered legs and the safety lines on there. Everything's running real smooth. I've got one brake that has a little fluid on the brake disc that got in there when I was bleeding it that I needed to clean up. But other than that, it's fly, flying great. Um, the speed is up from not having the gear legs covered. Obviously, I didn't fly with the wing struts uh, fared with this gear on either. So the combination of the two has me cruising you know, at a, at a high RPM cruise setting, I'm 100 or a little bit more on true airspeed. And I pulled back to economy cruise, I'm, I'm sitting right up there pretty close to 100, you know, 97-ish, which is uh, where I was at the high RPM setting before. So I've gained a little bit of 
of uh, airspeed. Flies really nice. Um, when you chop the throttle, it slows down a little bit better than it does with the Grove gear, um, but you don't get that higher top speed that you do with the Grove gear with the shock wheel on it. It's a total trade-off. They're both great. Um, for my prop uh, diameter, the size of my prop, I'm gonna stick with this gear for now because it gives me better ground clearance when I'm out here jumping around on the river. Um, there's a lot more vegetation out here than there used to be and this prop is very fragile for hitting stuff So I want to get as much ground clearance as I can and so that's why I'm on this gear right now And same thing when I go out to high Sierra the stole drags You don't need that prop clearance because it's a dry lake bed But I like to do other flying while we're out there So I want to make sure it's set up with the right tires and the right gear on it for going out and playing while we're there We're there also um so really, both gear are really fantastic. I can't really complain about either. Both, both of them have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, this gear's slow, the other one's fast. This has a little bit better ground clearance and angle of attack. You know, so there's some trade-offs there. So either one, you can't go wrong. They both work great. Blown away by how fast the speed picks up it is picking up on this thing. It's just really shows the difference in what the fairings on the gear legs will do for you. When I have my other kit box, I wrapped the gear legs with some duct tape <laughs> on a trip just to see if they did anything. And I actually did put the, the wing strut fairing stuff on the back. I didn't see any improvement at all. So, you know, taking the time to make these fairings, and maybe it was the duct tape was too loose, I don't know. But there's sure a whole hell of a lot of a difference with this uh, fared and covered gear leg. Okay, so that time, got about 47, and then I dropped the flaps to plant it, and I bounced pretty good. So, you could bounce with this TK1, or the Shock Monster landing gear. It, it does, does have the ability to bounce if you hit hard enough. There's 50. Uh, the 43 mile per hour touchdown. Take a look at what we got going on there. So from where the green starts to here, oh, that turns so you can see. From the green grass to here, well, less than 200 feet, I can tell you that. Play around with that some more. I still need to work on my slow speed control, touching down too fast. So this time when I come around, I'm just going to do a normal approach down with the flaps out and see how slow I can get it before I need to put it on. So I have a targeted speed to shoot for in the slip. Right now, I'm touching down at like 55, that's too fast. Now I can get down to like 45. So, the problem is I, I ran into it high, at uh, Reno last year was I went into a deep slip and held it for a long time and it stalls the tail. 
and I just dropped uh, like 100 feet short of the line because uh, I got too slow in the slip. So you got to know when to kick out of the slip. But as soon as you kick out of the slip, the the deceleration drops off. So then you're kind of just floating. So I want to make sure I kick out of the slip, have time to get down to 45 before crossing that line. I'm giving away all my tricks though. The slower you land, the shorter you can stop. And you really have to do it without trim because you don't have time to put trim in. So I'm going to do it without trim. So I'm holding a lot of back pressure. Which also means you don't have as much tail authority because you're not moving that tail quite the way you want to. Okay, so 56 right now. That's where I touched down last time. Down here. Hold it off this attitude. That was 43. Brakes are getting better. I think I had fluid on the disc. I'm burning it off slowly. So I'm at 8200 RPM right now. 101 indicated for the 104 true. So I think the gear covering was definitely worth it. It's flying more, a lot more like the Grove gear did than when it was not covered, meaning that it's taken longer to slow down drag profile, which is good, I guess. Okay, I'm on drive, drive, drive. I cut it, throw it in a slip here. It's like the plane warms up and goes faster. I don't understand. It's like I'm cruising about three, four miles per hour faster than I was on the way down here. All right, coming in hot. Directional control, speed control. So again, I actually held that in the slip until the wheel touched and then straightened it out once the wheel was on the ground. So the height of this gear has allowed me to try something new for this year's stole drag races and that's trying these small treaded tires for the wake bed. Uh, because of the taller gear legs I can still maintain the prop clearance I need with the small tires on it and they ended up working out great. I know you guys saw the previous video where I was able to take first place in the silver category. Uh, it was a great weekend. 
gear performed just perfect and these tires allowed for extremely positive braking and uh, good traction. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more video content coming up. We are in the process of putting the big wing on, so we'll have that video coming up hopefully pretty soon. Uh, if you like it, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one.